Hey YouTube, J.P. Dillon. Today we're going to look at a 1979 General Electric. Uh, the model tag is missing, but it does use the AC-A chassis. This is the one that has the uh, another one of the ones that has the infamous griplets in it. This set does work. Uh, picked it up at an estate sale, but really we're just going to go over basic service and get it so that it's working properly again. So it's in really nice shape cosmetically. It had a bright raster. You can see the cabinet's really pretty looking on this one. There's no dings or chips or marks or cigarette burns or anything weird. Still was holding on to its original VHF, UHF antennas. So we're going to get inside of it. Uh, I'm going to show you some aspects of service and then uh, hopefully we'll get it all spiffed up and running. All right, so here she is on the inside. Very clean, very nice looking chassis. Looks like it's been cared for, not a lot of dust. Uh, looking around, it looks like a 13 ACK series type uh, TV chassis. It's got a lot of user controls on the back still. You've got your AFC, horizontal hold, vertical hold, uh, vertical size and centering, chassis release. There's all your screen controls there. Uh, I don't think any drive though. They do have a focus control. This one, uh, someone has already replaced the focus divider, uh, which is nice and fresh and new. So that's cool. Probably won't have to do much with that. Uh, it's been a while since I powered it on. But really the things that you have to address on this are the quote unquote griplets. Basically what the griplets are is they're this is a double sided board and they use these little pass through rivets filled with solder to connect the two sides. The uh, griplets fail and they cause all sorts of intermittent problems. Uh, many audio companies had this kind of design too. Akai was one, Sansui was another. Uh, you'll see them on some Pioneer gear. It's just a pass through. And just to give you an example of what the griplets look like, uh, if we come down here and zoom in a little bit, those guys there, those are examples of griplets. Uh, the soldering still looks pretty good on them, actually, but I'm still going to redo them anyways. So you've got a couple there. Uh, you've got another one back there next to that. I mean, they're all over the place. You can see them just kind of strewn about on the board. But all of those need to be re-soldered. And if you don't, even if it looks good from the top, you're just asking for trouble. So, these are also of an age where most of those United Chemicon and Nishikon capacitors in there are probably still fine. So, I don't anticipate having to replace large amounts of capacitors. Uh, I am going to check the couple in the power supply over here. It looks like somebody replaced those already and taped them up. I don't think that's stock. But, um, otherwise, since it's all kind of boring, uh, I'm just going to kind of do the remedial services. I'll resolder the griplets off camera and then we'll clean all those pots back there. There's your delay line. It still uses a physical delay line. That's kind of cool. Uh, and, <coughs> excuse me, a <coughs> big fat flyback. So, yeah. Um, so let me resolder the griplets, and then once we've done that, then we'll work on cleaning all the pots and doing all the remedial work. So just as some pointers for you guys, uh, these chassis are really nice because everything kind of unplugs. And the main idea here is, is you want to unplug these guys here, these big connectors. They just pull off like that. You might want to mark which one goes where because, well, sometimes you make mistakes. Uh, you disconnect everything and then there are release clips here. You stick a screwdriver in to pry them away from the chassis and then the chassis slides out so that you can work on it really easy. So that's probably the best way to proceed if you're going to service one of these things is just disconnect everything and pull it out and then you'll be able to get at things easy. So now you can see that you can pull the main board out and it's completely mobile and serviceable and you can do all the solder work and everything easy peasy. So I'm going to resolder all these silly little griplet things and we'll just do some checks on all the major capacitors that would be most likely to fail. 
Um, I guess that tape is stock because those are period correct United Chemicons and the solder is all broken up on the underside of that. You can see some heat build up here, that kind of yellowing of the circuit board. But once I'm done with that, and uh, we'll clean all these pots and we'll put it back together and then do the setups. Also, FYI, don't forget to pull the shield off the IF section because there are griplets in here too. So you need to redo all those too. Make sure you don't miss those. I don't think there are any in this section, but definitely the lower section of the IF is definitely some more griplets. So make sure you don't miss those either. So now that we've done the top side, we definitely want to pay attention to the bottom. Uh, the points of interest are all of those connectors that you uh, would plug the sub-chassis into. Um, it's hard to see, but they do have little rings around the connectors there that should be paid attention to. Soldering on them doesn't look great. Oftentimes when you push the connector back down on it, it, uh, it breaks free somewhere. Uh, also, power supply. There's sections of the power supply that will get a little toasty, and so you definitely want to make sure that that's good. Uh, just And then go up to the front where your controls are, and you want to check and see that your controls are still attached, because sometimes they screw up too. So I'm going to do some touch-up work here, finish checking all the capacitors, and then we can put the thing back in. Alright, so the board's all resoldered, and I've checked all the caps, and all the caps seem to have really good ESR on them. So really it's just a matter of uh, cleaning all these switches and controls, and then putting the thing back. And here's my friend Keg Deoxit, and this is probably the only time you're going to see me with a stock short straw. And I'm just going to get in there and... Dump a bunch in and clean them all. This is the exciting part. Um, let's see, what pot was this? The contrast, somebody had the contrast all the way up. I'm just going to set it at about halfway. Brightness, eh, about two thirds of the way up. That's what you'd expect. And I'll just put that at about half. Tint and color. And I'll put the tint at half. And I'll set the color at minimum for now. Interesting. I just noticed this. That this has a horizontal drive control. Ooh, fancy. I'm not sure how that affects the picture, but I'm not going to mess with it. I know how it does on 1940s and 50s sets. All right. Uh, so here's our horizontal hold. Oops, sorry, i got to point the camera in the right direction. And vertical hold. These are both set at about midpoint. Okay, and then we have vertical size and vertical center. And these pots tend to get really touchy, so I do want to clean them. And see where they're at right now. Looks like about halfway up. Yeah, they're both at about the halfway point. So I'm just going to clean them real briefly. Then we'll clean that AFC switch. Okay, so that's all cool. Uh, I think we'll clean the tuner and stuff in the cabinet before I pop this back in, so let's get that on the bench. Okay, so I pulled the cover off the tuner as best as I can get at it, uh, but it's kind of tight in there, and I don't feel like dismounting everything to get it out. So I'm just going to uh, apply some deox to the rotor and let the 
tuner do the rest. Trying not to saturate too many of these tuning coils. Of course, it helps if I turn the spray down just a little bit. So it's not a geyser. And we'll rotate it some. Spritz a little more in there. This is irritating. It's hard to do this with one hand. Hold the straw still while I spray. Rotate it some more. that's not working because I'm now just picking up air. Right, let's shoot the little AFC terminals on the back. Okay, so now we're just going to get crazy with this. Ugh, it is heavy for a portable. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and put the tuner back together. Okay, dokie. Tuner is all reassembled. And all we have to do is slide the chassis back in and plug everything back up. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. There she is all back together, everything strapped up, all the griplets resoldered, boards soldered, everything checked, pots cleaned. So now, let's plug it in and uh, let's see what we can do next. Okie dokie, it's back together, it's now or never. Let's see what she does. A lot of noise right now. Do, 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 do. Oh look, we have a raster. No video, just a raster. Wonder if I missed something. Well, looking down in here, looks like everything's hooked up right. Flyback CRT board. Yeah, I don't think we did anything else spiffy or anything. Did I disturb anything on the tuner? Interesting. So we've got no We've got no video action. I've got sound. Of course, how much of that is to the dilapidated tuner? These tuners are always awful. Right now I just got raster, but if I flick through, I do get snow for a brief instant. No change otherwise. Interesting. So, when I hooked this thing up at the estate sale, I guess I didn't pay enough attention to it because we've got raster and we've got static, but that's about it. And I'm pretty sure this generator works. I could quickly sub something else into here. Yeah, let's try that real quick. All right, so uh, I've tried substituting signals, but that didn't change anything. And furthermore, 
unplugging the tuner altogether doesn't change anything at all. Uh, with the tuner unplugged, it doesn't do anything different um, except change the uh, audio level. I can get audio audio back, audio control back if I plug the tuner back in. I'm getting 22 volts to the tuner. Uh, the little RF cutoff transistor here that's supposed to blank things when you change channels is working and it's not causing a cutoff normally, at least not that I can tell. Uh, I've got 6 volts feeding the transistor, 6 volts supplied here and here. Uh, so I'm not really quite sure where to proceed from here. It's time to get a schematic. Yeah, but right now, I have audio in the way of static. No RF activity though. I can't pick up squat. Uh, we have someone broadcasting on channel 6 down here, analog low power, so I should get something. But I get nothing. And it's a raster, so obviously I'm not getting any IF information fed in, or something in the IF strip is very wrong. So, not going to be a quick video. <laughs> this is the second GE I've run into with issues. Uh, but anyway, um, hopefully we'll be able to get this one solved out, just not right now. So, that's going to be part one of probably many. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. More stuff to come.